Hi, I'm Matt Mayfield, and you're watching the Audio Fundamentals class. Today we're going to talk about comb filtering. Now, a comb filter is a complex EQ shape that happens because of the phase relationship and the time delay between two or more copies of the same wave. And the shape of that EQ curve changes depending on the delay time, or not so much the shape, rather, but the exact size of it. You'll see on the graph in a second. The thing to keep in mind is the comb filter does not happen if the signals are not identical copies. So places where you might find identical copies would be all the time in the acoustic domain because every time a signal bounces off a wall or a floor or a ceiling, it will cause a copy of itself mixing together at your ear to cause comb filtering. So let's take a look at why this happens. Last time you'll remember that we looked at a complex wave that had two sine wave ingredients, a low frequency and high frequency, and then we took two copies of that identical complex wave, one on the top, one on the bottom, and shifted them in time slightly. At this point, the higher frequency is out of phase, 180 degrees, but the lower frequency is only about 90 degrees out of phase or less, so when we mix these together, we end up canceling out the higher frequency and keeping the lower frequency. Likewise, if we shift it further to a point where the, the lower frequency is 180 degrees out of phase and the higher frequency is only 90 or so, we end up with mostly the higher frequency. A very similar but more complicated thing happens when you have copies of any signal. Let's take a look. We've secretly replaced the tone generator in this digital audio workstation with Folgers crystals. Let's see if anyone notices. So here I have a synthesizer track, and it is sending simultaneously to the normal output, where we have the plugins that show the spectrum analyzer and the waveform display. But in addition to sending to the regular output, it's also sending a copy of the signal at unity gain, so it's the same level as the, what's going to the output. It's also sending a copy to this track, where I have this delay plugin. So those two are then mixed together at the output, and that's where we'll see the final wave. So let's start with this sawtooth wave. Here you can see the shape of the sawtooth wave on the oscilloscope. The jerking around is just an artifact of the oscilloscope. And you can see on the spectrum analyzer that it has one ingredient at 100 hertz, one at 200, another at 300, 400, 500, 600, and so on, going down as you get up to the limit of the frequency. This pulsating here is also just an artifact of the display. It's not really doing any of that. So secretly behind the scenes, this is really two copies of this wave, both playing at the same time and being made louder because of that. So let's try adding a delay to one of the copies. And as we increase the delay, you see two things are happening. One is you can see on the waveform shape where the two leading edges of this sawtooth wave are happening. And on the spectrum analyzer, you can see that there's this strange up and down thing happening to the frequency response. Let's continue with a longer and longer delay. So it seems like there is a cancellation moving along, and right about now, this, this fundamental, the 100 hertz, is just about to get canceled out completely. Or near it, at least. Let's find the spot where it gets almost completely canceled out here it comes back as I change the delay a little bit. Now here's something interesting. That's with this note right here. If I play a slightly higher or lower note, this fundamental is back. So we can see that the shape of the EQ is based only on frequency and not on where relative to the other ingredients in the note it's happening. In fact, if I start on a much lower note, I can go up the scale and you see this fundamental is getting more and more canceled out as I get closer to the note where at this delay time it's completely canceled. And as I go above it as well, there it comes back. Okay, so we've got this note 
It's fundamental cancel at about 100 hertz. Let's find another delay time. Now, presumably, once we've been increasing this delay, the lowest cancellation goes even lower in frequency. Let's try going down the scale. Aha! This is even more canceled out. So we can find that the spot where it's canceled out is somewhere between, somewhere around this area. So this causes all sorts of complications when in the acoustic domain, you've got copies of waves in the forms of reflections combining with each other in your ear. And depending on exactly where the source of the sound is and where your ears are, those things will happen at different times. And depending on what the delay time is, it changes which notes and which ingredients of those notes get canceled out. It makes every note sound different. If you're a bass player, you'll certainly have noticed this. There are some notes in some rooms that just disappear and other notes that shake the whole stage. Let's look at one other thing. I have another track here that is set up to make noise. So this is white noise where it's just random pieces of thousands of ingredients coming and going constantly. And it's a pretty useful way to analyze and get a rough idea of the shape of an EQ curve. So let's put some noise through here and watch on the spectrum analyzer what happens as we increase the delay of one of the copies. And you've probably heard this sort of sound before. Now we're beginning to see where the comb filter gets its name. Because if we drew a graph of what the EQ change is, we would have something like the teeth of a comb. As we continue, you'll see that it goes down further and further. While the delay time is changing, it sounds very much like there's a note in there somewhere. But when you stop changing it, it's less obvious. And eventually, as you get to a very long delay, like over a second or so, you can hear the two copies come in and out, but they're no longer affecting each other's frequency. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.